Back in the 60s, one of the questions that college kids and other young thinkers kept bringing up in that culture was, who am I? Well, I don't think the who am I question is relevant to just one age. I think that question is being asked in every age, every generation, who am I? Uh, today, there's a tremendous uh, uh, identity issue as our culture uh, begins to question things about who am I uh, in uh, very secular sorts of ways. But I think the question is absolutely relevant, especially to the Christian. Well, who am I? There are many ways to define it, but here's the problem. We all grew up in a family. We all grew up in a neighborhood. We grew up in a culture. We grew up uh, in our school settings and a workplace and so on. Every one of those places where we lived and worked had people who were defining us. They didn't necessarily realize they were defining us, but they acted like mirrors. And when we looked in the mirror, what did we hear? Well, if uh, the boss was really down on our case, then we got kind of a neg negative image of who we were from their perspective. If we we're a Christian uh, defending the holiness of God, uh, the world's going to react to that. So the mirror of the world reflects back their disapproval of our position of who we think we are. Uh, in our families, uh, people tell us things. That's a mirror. Are they correct? Well, probably not. We're all fallible. But here's the whole point. We look in mirrors to try to get an answer to who we are. So the real question is, what mirror should we be looking in? Well, I'd like to suggest that the only mirror that really makes sense for the believer is the mirror of God. If I look in his mirror, he's going to tell me the truth about who I am. Uh, by the way, he's not going to hold back if my finiteness and my sinfulness uh, cause me to have an image that uh, doesn't meet with God's standard. He, in love, will be sure to tell me. The Holy Spirit, using the Word of God convicts me of those things that don't align with that which pleases Him. But on the other hand, God tells us things about ourselves that the world, our families, the workplace doesn't know anything about, necessarily. And that's what I'd like to focus on right now. In the book of Ephesians in chapter 1, <clears throat> I think there are 12 different expressions, phrases, that tell us who we are. And each one of them is making this statement that we are in Christ. So the th three phrases that are repeated over and over, there are 12 total in F uh, Ephesians chapter 1, are in Christ, in whom, that refers to Christ, in him, that refers to Christ. So what is he telling us about ourselves that we really need to know? All the mirrors that come from our fellow uh, human creatures are probably going to be uh, out of balance in some way. But God never shares anything but truth with us. And our identity is definitely established in Christ. I am who I am by virtue of being in Christ. If I really understand what it means to be in Christ, I'm way ahead of the game. So let's just take one verse from John chapter 14, verse 20. John says seven sweet words, you and me and I and you. So God is saying to us through the scriptures that the believer is in Christ and Christ is in the believer. That is the foundation of my identity. That is how I should view myself. Any other way is probably going to be uh, wrong. It's not going to be correct. So let's think of ourselves as being in Christ. So what are some things it says in scriptures about being in him, in Christ? Well, in Ephesians chapter 1, in verse 1, it says, <clears throat> Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and faithful in Christ Jesus. So he addresses his letter to believers, and he says, 
the believers in Ephesus, like all of us who are believers, are in Christ. That's a profound statement to be in Christ. And then in verse 4, we see another phrase, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. So we're not only in Christ, but before time, back in eternity past, God, before there was any material universe, chose believers uh, by some personal identification, DNA or name, uh, facial recognition. I don't know how he did it. But each believer was personally in love chosen by the Trinity. And we were chosen not independent of anything. The choosing was based on being in Christ. So the fact that we have this eternal love expressed through the Trinity to us is simply stated as being the fact that the Trinity connected us even before time with Christ, our acceptance before the Father, the Holy Spirit, the Son himself, is that we are seen to be in Christ eternally. And then in verse 13, we have another expression, which we've already mentioned, in whom, and it reads, in him you also trusted and heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. In Christ, in him, in whom. Three wonderful phrases that give us our true identity. So what is our identity? Well, if we're a believer, we have no righteousness on our own by nature. But if I'm a believer and justified by faith, God gives me credit for the righteousness of Christ. If I'm a believer, I'll never be condemned for my sin because in Christ, he died for my sin. I will not be condemned because he was condemned for me. In Christ, I have an inheritance. I don't have that eternal inheritance apart from Christ. It's only that I'm seen in Christ. And that inheritance includes everything that he inherits. And he inherits the whole universe. So we are co-heirs with him because we're in Christ. So when we find ourselves kind of putting ourselves down and not thinking much of ourselves and kind of listening to things people say and reacting to those things, those things can be very discouraging. So what do we need to listen to? We need to listen to what Christ has done for us. And the fact that we're in him, inseparably connected to him, and we always will be. So what is our identity? If the college kids in the 60s were saying, who am I? Well, the best answer they could have come to is to have accepted the truth of the gospel that those who believe in Christ are in Christ. That's our identity. That means that each believer has infinite worth and value. And how do we know that? Because Christ died for us. He viewed us as valuable, as having worth in himself. So God bless you as you think about who you are.